One of the things we're interested in is about the arts and humanities and how they can contribute to that these kind of issues around um, forced labour, migrations, uh, human trafficking. Do you what, what what would your answer be to that question? You know, can can you being a filmmaker and plays, what would your answer be to somebody who said, oh well, I'm not sure the arts and humanities have a role to play in that kind of social development around human rights and it's not true. It's not true. No, no, no. The arts and humanity have fantastic role to play. Yeah. I just gave you a background as to why I started using theatre in communities. Yeah, yeah. The level of illiteracy. Yeah, yeah. But also entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, when you entertain and use the process to inform, it even sticks more than holding workshops. Yeah. yeah. It sticks more. Yeah. I believe in the arts and entertainment. I believe in it very much. Yeah. Because I know what changes have, have helped. In 2007, we did a research on the informal legal sector. And we're looking at access to justice for women yeah. in Sierra Leone. Yeah. And so we're working in rural setting. Yeah. We, did, we did the documents, but it's a research material. They don't understand it. Yeah. We translated the research material into a short play. And we had a theater group, an Amnesty International theater group. Yeah. So when we go into the communities, the researchers sit there, the campaigners sit there, the theater group performs. When it finishes, we come to moderate and we ask the questions. They will tell you exactly what started from the beginning of the play to the end. Yeah. And you hear some of them say in their local languages, this is what I go through day and night. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very clear. Yeah. So it, it's, you, you use the arts. It's such, to me, it's a powerful tool mm -hmm. that's, that would change a lot of... I believe in it because I've used it. Yes. Yeah. I've used it. Yeah. And I know what what it does. And you've gone on using it. Ah, yes, you, you and I'll, I'll go on using it. it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'm doing I'm doing a a play. I'm writing a script that I call Beyond the Eyes. Mm. You know, when I worked for Amnesty International, we came across women that were raped during the war, but they did not have the opportunity to speak to anybody. So during our research, we came through, came along yeah. with some of them. But even in my community where I, I, I lived, because they know I worked for Amnesty International, a human rights organization, some people talked to me. And I got this lady who, she had a girl. The lady was around uh, five, six years. If you go to their home, they are like cats and a dog fighting. Mm -hmm. She beats that lady. So I wanted to understand what was the problem. I knew she was captured by the rebels. Mm -hmm. She stayed with the rebels for two years no. yeah. before she was released. She came pregnant. So when I had the opportunity to talk to her, and she said, when I see her, I remember what I went through through some horrible nights, mm. what happened to me. Mm. You know, so it yeah. reminds, they, there's a constant, the, the girl is a constant reminder mm. of the horror. She hasn't gone through counseling. She has not been rehabilitated. Mm. So she still carries the trauma. She sees the girl yeah. as the moment. Yeah. So there are lights flashing yeah. anytime she sees her. So because of this, I am doing the script called Beyond the Eyes. And Beyond the Eyes is about how a lady, a woman who was raped, got pregnant, came back to live in a community, but was so harsh with everybody in the community that nobody wanted to understand her until the daughter, graduating as a lawyer, got the mother to speak up. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm working on that script yeah. now. And you think the arts could be a good way of releasing all of that? Oh yes, that oh, you know when you, I know because when I talk about domestic violence yeah. in communities and you have a theatre group performing and beating and everything and then you stop yeah. and then you ask the women, 
you see the brightness yeah, in your face. They recognize. Relating, yeah, relating yeah, with yeah, the yeah, incident yeah. automatically. Yeah. But also looking at a solution. Yeah. What we do for domestic violence, when we perform, we don't talk to the communities. We talk to the leaders, yeah. the chiefs, to say, yeah. well, this is what this woman suffered in the hands of this man. Yeah. If you were a chief and they brought this woman, what will you do? Yeah. You see the positive answers that they yeah. give. So there's, there's some form of reassurance now from the women and the community. And I can tell you, when we are doing this, under my leadership, we are able to establish what we call Amnesty International Villages. We've got three Amnesty International Villages here in Sierra Leone. One is in the far east called Nikabu, and the other in the south. And in these Amnesty Villages, they had bylaws, the chiefs had bylaws. One, all children should go to school. Two, you don't beat your wife. Three, they say you can punish your children, but you don't touch on them. So they are able to understand the key things. Yes. They gave, they empowered women. In fact, what they did was we had money, and this money was given to the women to establish farms for themselves. That is what we did. We got the chiefs in these communities as progressive chiefs. A woman comes to report the and husband. And is that the key, the chiefs, you feel, in terms of change? Generally? Exactly. You have to tap in. There's no point just trying to go. No, but it depends on what you want to do. For us, what yeah, we wanted to do there was access to justice. We wanted to give justice to the women. Yeah. And those who give justice are the chiefs. Are the chiefs. So it's not yeah. just empowering and enlightening the women, but also getting the chiefs yeah. to understand. Yeah. You know, also accept so the So it person. becomes a community. It becomes a community-led community -led program. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that is it. And it was through theater. Yeah. yeah through songs yeah. that we are doing all of this. It does not even workshops. That's a great advertisement. It's not workshop. It's yeah. not workshop. Yeah. What we wanted to do, when we, are, we went to communities, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the dangers of maternal mortality. Yeah. We, we had the same theatre group. Yeah. We had a play called In Adas Case. Mm. It was a play, they, they can perform it in Timini, yeah. they perform it in Mende. We, yeah. we got we got it translated into different languages yeah. and the artist can And that's very important too, yes. isn't it? that cultural sensitivity, exactly. language, and translation. It's, it's always very good. It has to. Yeah. In fact, yeah. one thing I learned is that even if, if you don't understand the language of the people, yeah. there's Creole, which is the lingua franca, it's common. Yeah. What you can do is, there are certain words, certain real words yeah. that resonate with these people. You have to call them in their own languages. Yeah. So what we do is we do specific research on particular words that people can really relate to it. Yeah. And when you use these yeah. words, oh, you sometimes you get them yeah. shouting. Yeah, yeah, you get them shouting. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. so that is to me. If somebody tells me that the art has nothing to do with change, yeah. I'll tell you it's not true. Because what I know as a change manager yeah. Yeah. is that yeah. you have to give information yeah. to somebody. Yeah. The person has to have enough information yeah. to be able to counter whatever information that is sitting within that person. Yeah. Until that person has that information, it will be difficult to get that person yeah, to So change. it's about getting that information into, into the person. So, so you have to. Yeah. I'm doing it yeah. in, a, in a way that is effective yeah. and acceptable. Yeah. 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 And, and that is it. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. And films, to me, films are so good. You know, when I, when I teach, when I teach advocacy, yeah. especially to Elites, when I do full time yeah. advocacy training, there's a film called The Castle, Last Castle. Yeah. Yeah, it's an American yeah. film. Yeah. It's called The Last Castle. Yeah. The entire film is an advocacy campaign. Mm -hmm. So, what I do is uh, the first day I play that film, mm -hmm. you look at it, you really don't know why I'm playing it. Finish is done. Then it's the second day when I begin to discuss advocacy, yeah. and I want to look at an advocacy plan yeah. you will now see exactly what happens this major was captured yeah. because they say of insubordination yeah. and brought into a military camp yeah. he came there he identified a problem yeah. and advocacy means he have to identify a problem yeah. Yeah. and you want to address that problem yeah. Yeah. so he identified the problem yeah. he wanted to change that problem that became his goal yeah. in advocacy you must have a goal yeah. but then he need objectives <laughs> How do I go about it? Yeah. Because yeah. each of each strategic objective is leading to the goal, but yeah. accumulative objectives finally lead to a final goal. Yeah. But then when you have the objective, you now have to develop activities. Yeah. What do I do yeah. to satisfy this objective? 
So the guy was able to die, and then he want to build allies. He want to look at who are on my side and who are opponent to me. How do I get those opponent to me? How do I give them information? You understand? And then your resources. What do you need? So it is in the entire yeah, film. Yeah. By the time it was time for the execution of the plan, you now want to go to implement. They've even done risk assessments, <laughs> risk management, and risk reduction. Yeah. They've done it. They say, okay, the, the boss man always sits at the high pole. And if they start and they are downstairs, they can shoot and kill all of them. So what they have to do is they have to get somebody to take over those high points. So you are reducing that. They say, what if they fail? They have to use. Uh, uh, petrol bombs mm. to dislocate them. Mm. You know, so they got everything set before they started the action. At the end of the day, the boss man died. Mm. But what they wanted to prove was that there was the head of the prison mm. who was maltreating mm. the people, and they wanted to get him out. Yeah. And they got him out eventually. Yeah. 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 You know, so yeah. that's how I start. So that, yeah. that's the fee. Yeah. So even amongst educated people, when you start talking about advocacy now and you begin to point to some part of the film, you begin to play it in bits. Oh, you see people related really, to it. Before sure. you know it, the entire advocacy training is done and dusted. It's really interesting. Really interesting. Do you think there's a problem about sustainability about all of these kind of interventions? And, uh, yeah. 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 And you know why? Yeah. Most of the campaigners are people that also need to survive. They also need to survive. Yeah. You know, once my son was asking me, you know, he says, Daddy, we've seen people that are very rich, but you're not rich. And I told him, yeah, yeah. any yeah. advocate that is rich is not an advocate. Mm. Mm. Because the, the resources you receive is not for you, yeah. it's for the work that you yeah. do. Yeah. So most of the problem is that uh, sustainability comes as a result of if these activists are not able to sustain themselves, they'll, they'll move to look for uh, livelihood jobs. And sometimes these are not jobs that, that are paying attention to all of these things. Yeah. But also, uh, we also have donors that come with specific objectives. Yeah. They come, research, they get their material, they go, and that's it. Yeah. They never come back mm. to say, oh, how did we get this going? They never come back. Mm. You know, and I was looking at... Uh, a quotation that says that uh, governments do not want enlightened people. Mm. Yeah, because when, when, if you have enlightened people, mm. these people will not allow will you not to govern them yeah, yes, yes. anyhow. Yeah, yeah. So what governments always want is they want people that are not enlightened. Mm. So government is not interested in awareness raising, mm. in building the capacity of people to understand certain things. Mm. For instance, which government will begin to talk about, oh women, you have your right, stand up, stand up for your right. Mm when they hope to work with the men to coerce the women to get the men to force the women to vote where they want to vote yeah it's, you know so it's it's it's, it's a problem yeah. you know so, so, no, it's not all government but most african governments don't want enlightened societies because when people are enlightened they will ask the critical questions they will stand up for their right they will challenge you they will vote you out yeah yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. if you if you if you do the wrong things they'll vote you out yeah. You know. So being being an activist in this in this climate, I was asking, we were talking to <laughs> Ragiatu. Oh, Ragiatu Nene. Yeah. Oh. Uh, about I was asking her about what 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 did it mean to be an activist in Sierra Leone, and it was um, well she well she was telling me about death death threats and intimidation. And I'll all. tell you, I call it the goodie bad and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Being an activist in Sierra Leone is like uh, pitching yourself against the powers that be. Because what people really don't want to understand, when you begin to talk about things that are supposed to happen, real issues, they begin to see you as an opposition. They brand you quickly as an opposition. So activism work in so I see, for me, I have decided to become an activist. And I'm going that path, and I'm not, I'm not changing. I know it's difficult. But I believe in the cause that I'm fighting. Yeah. I don't want to get rich. I want to touch on lives. Yeah. That is me. Yeah. Yeah. I know the challenges that I've gone through being an activist in Sierra Leone. Yeah. And I know the challenges that I'm still going through. Yeah. I've lost a lot of friends because of activism work. Friends that we were friends in college, or because they are now in politics, they don't even want to talk to you because you raise things that they don't want to hear. Yeah. Friends that you used to sit and talk, they don't talk to you anymore. Friends that you used to have text messages together, they don't send text messages to you. Yeah. 
highly placed people that normally call you, they talk to you, don't talk to you because you take the line of being an activist. Especially when you touch on critical issues like FGM, yeah. the death penalty, yeah. uh, 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 women's empowerment, mm -hmm. political issues. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe somebody is, is tampering with the constitution mm -hmm. and you want people to understand that what that person is doing is wrong with that particular constitution. They don't want to hear it. They get annoyed. Or they kill somebody in Kabbalah a policeman kills somebody in Kabbalah and he raises it up and he reminds the police of their responsibility and asks that you can report them to the United Nations and other people. Somebody don't want to hear that. They see you as a threat. So it's such a tough, tough, tough moment. Yeah. Since I left the Human Rights Commission, this is the first interview I'm granting. Really? I just decided I'm not talking to anybody. Really? Well, I've gone have, quiet. Great yes, I've got, I've got a lot of uh, 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 requests from radio yeah, stations, yeah, yeah. television stations that I know that yeah, something yeah. went wrong, yeah. but I wasn't renewed. I said, yeah. I am going quiet. Yeah. Give me time to relax. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I don't yeah. want to obstruct yeah. the political process. Yeah. Let us go on. Yeah. There will come a time when some of us will speak out. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need activists in Sierra Leone because our people are in darkness. They need somebody to raise the critical voices and people that they can trust. Yeah. So for some of us, people have confidence in us. We do not want to lose that confidence. So I want to continue to stand tall. Like the way people have seen me, no politician is going to mess me up for, for, for change of money or for fame or for, or for uh, opportunities or, or posts. No. Thank you. I think it's a great place to stop. Is that okay, Mami? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But th thank you so much. It's really inspiring stuff.